you're a successful entrepreneur. And the whole idea, I mean, I don't teach um, entrepreneurship, etc. But uh, the, the big thing is having an idea, identifying the problem and coming up with a solution, etc. Um, and you, you spoke from the angle of make sure you, you, you've got finance and that you, you've got low overheads, etc. to make a success. But what if you've got an idea and the reality is a lot of people don't have a lot of money. So how do you sell your idea? How do you secure funding? Um, so I, I think about business and startups a lot like marriage. Women and men, you know, the mating instinct. I mean, there's like a, there's too many parallels. And, uh, and you guys can probably all relate to the whole mating instinct. So I'll try to tie that into a little. I think, you know, trying to start a business is like trying to have a kid. You know, it's tricky if you're not married. What you want to be is married before you start having children. You actually want to have known each other for quite some time because you don't really know what's going to happen when you've got kids at all. You've got kids. Uh, so the first step is, is um, finding a partner, a business partner. So if you want to start a business, find a business partner. Don't think about the idea, don't think about raising money. Find a business partner. Find someone who resonates with you, that, that complements you as well. So you have some overlap, you look at the world in the same way, fundamentally. But, but like I'm a, I'm a sales guy, like I'm, a, I'm a marketing and sales guy. I finally accepted that I was smart. You know, coming to terms with that took a lot of issues, and it wasn't something I put in my CD when I applied for accounting. And um, but then I need a I really I need a really conservative financial guy, and I really need a good detail ops guy and a, and a strong technical guy. So you know, for me at the moment, my most important part, my business partner, is my CFO because he's rock solid when it comes to not spending money, you know, and I'm quite comfortable spending money. So we have a nice overlap, and he's um, and I think. Uh, that's the first step. So you know, you, and the way you find a, your your future partner in business is you you let it be known. Just like with girls, like if I'm looking for a girl, you know, if I don't, if I'm not obviously single and keen, it's going to be difficult for the girl of my dreams to find me. Right? It's actually never going to happen anyway. I still have to go chase her. But <laughs> the point is, you've got to uh, you've got to make it known that you're on the market. You, know, you don't want to be off the market because then you're going to end up with the wrong type of person. You know, um, so you want to be. You want to be telling people that you want to start your own business, that you, you're looking for ideas. Maybe you've got an idea, you don't really need to have an idea. You just want to let people know that you're entrepreneurial, even if people are laughing at you and thinking you're a fool for that. Whole thing. And in that way, some people can come across your path. And, you know, it's a numbers game. You've got to you know, just run through a few people until you click with the right person. And then with ideas, you know, once you've clicked, you start thinking about ideas. A lot of businesses start like that. Two people get together and they start trying to make money. And they go through 10 things until they hit on the thing that's going to make money. And it's the same iteration process. So it's a lot easier iterating when you've got a partner. And then, uh, what was the end of that question? Your, your money, how do, you, how do you fund it? Have you ever needed to, to pitch to a bank? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've raised a lot of money. I, my first business, I was funded. So I was, I was an angel investor, had the idea, and had the capital, and just said, will you run it? And I gave me 10%. That became a very big business. I made a hell of a lot of money out of that. I was very lucky. Um, Will of Avatar, when I started that, I had to fund it myself and then I had to raise money. I raised about 50 million rand. And then when we bought Mixit, I raised about 500 million rand. And so I've, I've raised money. I've raised money from rich people, I've raised money from poor people, I've raised money from my parents, I've raised money from my best friends from Varsity, I've raised money from banks, I've raised money from institutions, listed companies. And it always comes back to one fundamental thing. We've actually just finished a fundraise now for Hero Telecoms, our new for profit. I uh, raised about 19, 19.4 million. That's the number was confirmed this morning. And, uh, and it was interesting going through this exercise again, you know, because, you know, I've had some, I've hit it out of the park once or twice, but I've also lost a lot of money for people, other than me, you know. And those people are billionaires. And, and the reason they become billionaires is because they don't lose money. So when you lose money for them, like, they don't run around telling people you're the nicest guy in the world. <laughs> and, uh, and so it was quite risky for me to go through this exercise again to ask people for money. Not just billionaires, but friends. Because right? if I ask you, if I know um, your name, if, if I know you, this is a friend like from articles or something like that, and then I ask you, how'd you like to invest in my new business? And you say no, it's quite, it's like rejection. It's just like, hey, you want to go for a date? No. <laughs> and um, and you, so you put yourself out there. And uh, quite a few of my friends actually did say no. They did it as nicely as they could, which was basically they just didn't reply to me. But they, they said no, and then I took that on board as like basically they don't believe me. Right? Um, and I know some other people just kind of come in without any questions asked and pay the money. 
Uh, if you've got a business, so this is entrepreneurs that don't have businesses, entrepreneurs have startups, entrepreneurs have got an idea, maybe a little bit of money or whatever, but they don't really have anything that's substantial. If Deloitte's were to do an audit, they would say don't invest. So it's, it's never something that you can kick the tires on. And that's where it's important to, to, you have to, you have to learn how to sell. And selling is just about passion, right? So, and when we were trying to raise that half a billion rand for, for Mixit, um, my old man actually gave me the best advice for that, because we almost didn't get across the line. In the end he said, look Al, you know, you're selling spreadsheets. Nobody invests in spreadsheets. Sell the dream. Sell the story. And people will buy the story or not buy the story. But as soon as you get into this conversation about how much money are you making, show me the five-year forecast, blah, 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 you're going nowhere because the investor doesn't understand that this is risky. And they're thinking they can de-risk by doing a, a financial due diligence. So the best advice for anyone trying to get money or find a partner or get ahead or get a customer is, you know, don't sell the, the, the detail. Sell the story. Yeah. So it sounds a bit loose, but that's accounting. These guys are not teaching you that, right? I mean, it's good. You get too much storytelling, you're not getting the substance. They're giving you substance, but at the end of the day, people buy stories. That's fantastic advice. Sir. He did end off there by saying what you're doing is important. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing the substance. Especially oil and tuts. <laughs> <laughs>